5.5 practice problems. The gas phase reaction, A plus B goes to AB, is assumed to occur in a single step. Two experiments were done at the same temperature inside rigid containers. The initial pressures of A, B, uh, A and B were used in experiment one, were used twice the initial pressures used in experiment two. Which statements provide uh, the best comparison for the initial rate of formation of AB in experiments one and two? So if we have uh, increased the pressure, then that means that we have decreased the amount of space that we have between the molecules. And so they are more likely to collide with each other. Um, and so therefore the rate of uh, reaction should be faster in experiment two. Um, so A says the initial rate formation of AB is the same in both experiments. Um, no, we have a higher pressure, therefore more collisions. Uh, so experiment two should be going faster. Initial rate of formation of AB is slower in experiment one than with experiment two, because at the same temperature, a higher pressure would reduce the volume for AB molecules to achieve the proper orientation of a, sex, of a successful for a successful collision. Um, no, this reasoning is uh, inversed. So one, a higher pressure would not uh, reduce volume for uh, successful or proper orientation. Instead, uh, it would make it more likely that it will happen to run into each other in the successful or uh, pro uh, correct orientation. Uh, so no. The initial formation of AB is faster in experiment one than in experiment two because at higher pressure, the collisions between AB would be more frequent, um, increasing the probability of a successful collision. Um, so this is saying that uh, higher pressure is going to um, increase the uh, rate at which we are reacting. Uh, which is correct. And then the initial uh, rate of formation is in AB and is faster in experiment one than in experiment two because the higher pressure, um, a larger fraction of AB molecules would have the minimum energy required to overcome the activation energy. So um, higher pressure is not going to uh, change our uh, amount of energy that we have. Instead, it's just going to increase the number of collisions. And so option choice C is going to be our best choice since again, experiment one had twice the pressure. And so we are going to have um, much more collisions and therefore we'll be going faster than in experiment two. Uh, the reaction is carried out at a constant temperature in a rigid container. Based on this mechanism, which of the following is the most likely reason for the different rates of step one and step two? So step one is a slow reaction here, and step two is a fast reaction here. So um, it being a slow reaction means that we have a higher activation energy and we are uh, just generally more difficult uh, getting those reactions to start. So looking there, uh, the only factor determining the rate of step two is the orientation um, between HI and ICL. Uh, polar molecules during collision, but has a negligible effect when H2 and ICL molecules collide. Orientation is, is important and stuff, and so uh, saying that there's no orientation needed, uh, or that's the only factor that's here, uh, just doesn't quite make sense. The amount of energy required for a successful collision between H2 and ICL is greater than the amount of energy required for a successful collision between HI and ICL. So that was, again, uh, the first thing that I said. So that our activation energy is going to be different here. Um, it is going to be a larger hump that we have to overcome in order for this reaction to occur. So that sounds good. So we're gonna go ahead and wait and see if there are any other better explanations. The fraction of molecules with enough energy to overcome the activation energy barrier is lower for HI and ICL than H2 and ICL. Um, so, uh, specifically saying that uh, the number of molecules that have enough energy is lower would make 
the second step go slower, so that does not make any sense. The frequency of collisions between H2 and ICL is greater than the frequency of collisions of HI and ICL. So frequency of collisions would make this go faster, um, and so that would make this fast, this slow. So B is the only choice that explains um, potentially why step one would be slower, and again, that is based off of activation energy. Uh, the proposed rate determining step for, react, uh, for a reaction is NO2 goes to NO3 plus NO. Uh, the graph above shows the distribution energies for nitrogen dioxide molecules at two temperatures. Based on the graph, which of the following statements best explains why rates of disappearance of nitrogen dioxide are different at temperature 2 than at temperature 1? So uh, temperature 2 versus temperature 1. Um, and we have the overall energy of the molecules versus the number of the molecules. And um, we're looking at the overall uh, consumption of nitrogen dioxide. So uh, nitrogen dioxide um, is going to be consumed at a faster rate uh, for temperature two because more molecules possess energies at or above the minimum activation energy. Um, required for a collision compared to a temperature one. So um, here is the uh, amount of energy that we need in order for a successful reaction to occur. At temperature one, we have a lower proportion here versus temperature two where we have a higher proportion. So option choice A stating that uh, the amount of energy that is within uh, the system and those number of uh, molecules that possess that energy is higher for temperature two versus temperature one is going to be our correct choice here. Uh, what effect will uh, increasing the uh, hydrogen ions at constant temperature have on the reaction presented above? So um, if I increase the amount of a reactant, then I am going to uh, increase the number of collisions and um, theoretically also um, decrease the uh, amount of time that has to pass in order for the reaction to go to completion. So um, activation energy uh, is not going to change. Um, however, the frequency of the collisions of the hydrogen and the uh, perchlorate ions uh, are, are uh, will increase, that, that is true. We have more hydrogen, so therefore we will uh, get a uh, more collisions there, and so potentially uh, more successful collisions and a faster rate of reaction. Um, the reaction represented above occurs in a single step that involves a collision between a particle of nitrogen monoxide and a particle of nitrogen trioxide. A scientist correctly calculates the rate of collisions between nitrogen monoxide and nitrogen trioxide that have sufficient energy to overcome the activation energy. The observed reaction rate is only a small fraction of the calculated collision rate. Which of the following best explains the discrepancy? So, um, the we know that they have uh, calculated this correctly. However, um, the amount of molecules that actually successfully react is not nearly as high as the amount of molecules that are colliding. And that is going to be because the uh, molecules need to be in the correct orientation and have the correct amount of energy in order to react. So we're going to look for something along those lines. Um, the energy of the collisions between the two reactant particles is frequently absorbed by the collision of a th with a third particle, uh, nobody do da. The two reactive particles must collide with a particular orientation in order to react. That is a good reason. We're going to hold off and see if there's anything that uh, encompasses that and also the amount of energy. The activation energy for the reaction is dependent on the uh, concentrations of the uh, reactant particles. Activation energy is not uh, contingent on the concentration. Activation energy for the reaction is dependent on the temperature. Uh, no, we just are able to get enough molecules up to the correct activation energy um, if we are at the proper temperature. So option choice B is going to be our only choice that 
um, correctly identifies a reason that the number of collisions doesn't match the number of successful reactions. Which of the following best describes the role of uh, the spark from a spark plug in an automotive engine? So the uh, spark for the spark plug is going to go ahead and uh, give the energy to the molecules that are around it so that they can go ahead and have successful uh, reactions. So we're going to go ahead and look for something similar to that. Uh, the spark plug decreases the energy of activation for this slow step. That would be as if it was a catalyst, um, but we do have to uh, turn the spark on and get it to spark in order for it to work. Its presence alone is not enough, so it's not a catalyst. The spark increases the concentration of the volatile reactant. Uh, the spark plug just provides a spark. It doesn't uh, change the actual amount of anything that is within uh, the uh, system. The spark supplies some of the energy of activation for the combustion reaction. So again, we uh, have that uh, some energy is being provided in the form of that spark, and that is helping those uh, molecules have enough energy to go ahead and react. So that does sound good, but we're gonna go ahead and see if we have anything that sounds better. Spark provides a more favorable activated complex for the combustion reaction. No, uh, the spark provides the heat of vaporization for some volatile hydrocarbon, again, no, the spark's job is to provide a spark and increase the energy of the overall system so that the um, uh, molecules have enough energy to go ahead and react successfully. Factors that affect the rate of chemical reaction include which of the following? Frequency of collisions um, of the reactive particles, definitely. So I'm gonna eliminate anything that doesn't include number one. Kinetic energy of the collisions of the reacting particles. Uh, if I don't have enough kinetic energy, if I don't have enough overall energy within the system, I am not going to be able to react properly. So I'm gonna eliminate anything that doesn't include two. And then finally, orientation of the reactant particles during collisions. That is also a factor. So that would be option choice E that includes all three of those as factors that will affect the overall rate of reaction. Uh, which of the following best helps explain why an increase in temperature increases the rate of chemical reactions? So if I have a increase in temperature, that means that uh, the overall energy of the molecules is going to be higher, and therefore we have a uh, higher likelihood of reaching that minimum uh, energy required for that activation energy. And so we're going to look for something along that line where we have the molecules have enough energy to react. At higher temperatures, reactions have a lower activation energy. No, uh, the overall activation energy does not change. Um, it is still the same. It's just the proportion of the molecules that have the amount of energy that are, is needed is what changes. At higher temperatures, every collision results in the formation of a product. Uh, no, um, the temperature is the overall uh, amount of energy that the molecules have on average um, increases if we increase the temperature, but that doesn't mean that every single collision is going to be successful. We still need orientations to be um, in the correct uh, format, etc. And then finally, at higher temperatures, high energy collisions happen more frequently. Yes, uh, we have higher energy collisions, which means that we are more likely to um, have enough energy within those collisions to meet the activation energy required and therefore have a successful reaction.